Here he is to sing for you, Harold Lefty Williams. In your presence, lift your hands, your holy presence. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. In your presence, your holy presence, oh. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord, oh. Nothing like the presence of the Lord. Listen. There's nothing like being in your presence. When I'm there, I find serenity. I surrender all, all. Cause in your presence is where I want to be In your presence is where I find peace Holy things are in your presence Yeah, yeah God in your presence Your holy presence There's nothing like being Jacob, your holy I want to recognize your presence. God, I won't let you go till you bless my soul. In your presence, God, in your presence, your holy presence, I find peace, I find joy and happiness, happiness, holy things. You stay right there with me For that I'll be like the prodigal son I'll find my way back home In your presence. Father, if you withdraw your presence Whither shall I go? Just one touch Lord, I thank you for your presence I thank you for your presence. Your holy presence God I thank you for loving me even when I didn't love myself I'm talking about me even when I didn't care enough to call your name in the midnight hour God I feel you wrapping your arms around me yes I do nothing like your presence there's nothing like your presence, Jesus. Nothing like the presence of the Lord. Come on and lift those hands. Oh, 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 oh. God, I thank you for loving me first. Listen, there's nothing like the presence of the Lord. No matter what you may be going through, you have to remember there is nothing like the presence of God. Lift your hands and give God praise. Thank you. Now, as a motivational speaker, mm -hmm. as, a, as an entertainer, mm -hmm. as a gospel artist, uh, you, you do a multitude of things. <laughs> and as this, this, you've been in... Uh, 24 countries? 24 countries, that is correct. In every state? Every in, state in this country. In the United States? Yes. Uh, you do a lot of traveling. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yes, I've been fortunate enough to, uh, to impact the lives of youth all across the country. I've been fortunate enough to travel to 24 countries, and I'm really, really, really excited about it. Really excited about it. Um, just thankful. It's really thankful. Um, I remember uh, when... I got the opportunity to uh, become a Harlem Globetrotter. One of my slogans is a delay is not a denial. Yes. Um, so many doors have been slammed in my face trying to pursue this dream, but ultimately 
uh, it has not been denied. Mm -hmm. And um, these are one of the things that um, I'm doing right now. I'm traveling the country teaching youth to dare to dream, which is another tour. It's my dare to dream tour, and I'm talking about uh, teaching the kids to dare to dream. You know, without a vision, the people perish. Mm -hmm. And you have, to, uh, you have to have a vision. And I want uh, the youth of America to understand that it is okay to dare to dream because if God did it for Lefty, if he did it for me, he can do it for them. Dare to dream. How, how is the process? What is it? Speaking? It's a, it's a little bit of both. Um, what I have is I go into different schools, different nonprofit organizations. Okay. I come in, and it's a tour based off of basketball tricks. Everyone want to see the cool tricks. And after that, I say, yeah, all of that was great, but now let me tell you why I'm really here. Mm -hmm. And I get a chance to share with them um, powerful messages, whether it be on bullying, substance abuse, abstinence. Wow. You know, should I say that again? Abstinence. Yeah, you cover some heavy subjects. <laughs> yeah. And you just hit them, you hit them hard and, and, and heavy, but you give them, you know, some substance. And then I give them some giveaway prizes. I have, you know, a wristband that says Lefty Williams with my slogan, a delay is not yeah. a denial. Different photos, different product. Uh, some, some friends at Under Armour uh, helped me out, and I, I give them some, give the kids some product. So the Real door thankful. opener is Lefty Williams, the great basketball player, and mm -hmm. all of these tricks, and now you got their interest, and pow, yeah. you move in and give some great stuff. Yeah, yeah, that Super. is correct. Dare to dream, I like that. Yeah. You went to England and played. Yes, Nottingham, <laughs> England. Nottingham, England, the EBL First Division. Uh, it was a great opportunity. Uh, I was happy about that. You got knighted, obviously, because you yeah. became a Nottingham knight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the things that I like about it is uh, at all of the countries I've been to, uh, it wasn't much of a transformation for me because they speak English. So I didn't have to adapt too that much. That helped. <laughs> yeah, different English from us, more oh, yeah. proper, I would say. But, uh, yeah. Played for the Washington Generals. Yes. Yes. And then you wound up with one of my favorite teams, uh -huh. one I take my grandsons to see often, mm -hmm. of the Harlem Globetrotters. Yes, yes. I was grateful for the opportunity. A uh, gentleman by the name of Charles Tex Harrison, I thank God for him. Uh, he gave me opportunity uh, to uh, showcase my talent and become uh, the team's first left-handed showman. Yeah. And not only did, was I the first left-handed showman, but the Lord had him name me Lefty, so I'm thankful for that. Yeah. That's a good name. That's yeah, thank you. That was my name as a, as a kid. Uh, I want to ask you about something very serious. Mm -hmm. Can I do that? Yeah, yeah. Tell me about David. David, my brother. Man, who I didn't expect that question. Uh, very, very, very special person to me. Uh, he's my baby brother. He's a uh, 10 year difference in age. At a young age of three, my brother, he, uh, he was suffering with seizures all the time. Mm -hmm. Never forget, I came home uh, from elementary school. I came in the house, and I, I, I looked at the couch in the living room, and he was shaking. I thought maybe it was a bad dream. I rolled him over, and his eyes was rolling back in his head. And uh, I said, Mom, you know, David's in here. Something's wrong with David. She immediately recognized it. And my father had not yet come home yet, and he came in walking in, and they were trying to stop it. I went to go pick up the phone to, to uh, call the EMT. The lines were dead. I rushed to the elevator. The elevator stopped working. Mm. Rushed down four flights of steps, ran all the way down the block, uh, Monticello and, and, and Belmont Avenue. I remember it like it was yesterday. Picked up that pay phone, and that pay phone wasn't working. So I ran across further to Emory, when I picked up the payphone, I was able to get a hold of um, the, you know, EMTs. They came. They were able to stop the seizures. By the time he got to the hospital, he had another one. Well, this one set him into a coma. Mm -hmm. My brother went into a coma. i never forget. My mom would go to the hospital and pray for him every day, every day, just watching Faith. And I got a chance to see firsthand what Faith looks like. Um, and when my brother woke up from the coma, his very first words, I promise you, was, Ma, I want to go to church. Wow. Yeah, at three. And he was wow. pointing at the window. He must have seen an angel. He was pointing, trying to point at the window in the hospital room. And we looked, and uh, we had to teach him how to walk again, how to speak again. But years later, you know, graduated from high school, varsity basketball player. Wow. Uh, went to prep school and uh, everything. God, God has totally restored his life, and I'm thankful to God for that. Mm. The spiritual impact of going through that uh, for you mm -hmm. uh, is expressed in the ministry you conduct? Oh, absolutely. Um, 
we overcome by the words of our testimony. Mm -hmm. You know, and I believe that uh, we go through for other people. And it is in the breaking process that we grow. Allowing God to do those things for you in your life, you're able to grow and help somebody else. You know, I always tell people, you know, when I was younger, people say, hold on, uh, you can make it, it'll be okay. But they weren't making it, they weren't holding on. They, they, they were, life stepped in and it failed them and they found an excuse to run. I wanna hear hold on from someone who's actually holding on. I wanna hear you can make it from someone who's made it. So, um, uh, all the difference in the world. Yeah, all the difference in the world. All wow. the difference in the world. Yeah. Uh, I listened to you sing a while ago. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, very good. Thank you so uh, much. I really enjoyed that. And your project here is from the hardwood to the number two, hard mm. praise. To hard praise. Okay. Yes. Uh, now, I listened to uh, In Your Presence, mm -hmm. and that that's very meaningful. And I'm assuming that that's... Uh, the message you're taking out to people wherever you go and breathe. Oh yeah, I was in a place uh, in my life where uh, Paula White, she said something to me back in 09. She said, she said, you'll be like the tree. The leaves will be shaken. Everything around you will fall. Everything around you will be shaken, but you, you remain standing, you remain with strength. A time in my life when that happened, uh, where some people walked away, some people ran away. There was some people God just cut loose. And uh, I'll never forget, I was at my grandmother's house in Wilmington, North Carolina, and, and, and God put my uncle on my, on my spirit. I hadn't talked to him in some time. Mm -hmm. When I spoke to him, he came into my life at such a critical moment. And um, through my worship and through mentoring and guiding, um, God began to give me music. And I thought it was for other people. My mom had, at the time had been in the studio working on her project. And God began to tell me, no, I'm giving this project to you. And that's where in your presence was birthed. It's nothing like the presence of the Lord, because in his presence, he can speak peace to your fears. He can reassure you that I got you. Um, we have to remember in dark what God spoke to us in the light. And you can find all of those things in his presence. Mm. Great stuff. Great stuff. People contact you. Mm -hmm. You go out and you speak in churches, mm -hmm. you speak in... Uh, I've been in churches, malls. I've been in malls. Okay. <laughs> I've been in malls, what okay. they call demos, where I do different tricks and everyone come around. Yeah. And it's cool because they get to meet Lefty, but yes. when they hear what I'm about, I'm all about um, impartation. I want to impart something into the youth. When I was a kid, when I did get a chance to go to games, which were very rare, and if I did, I was a part of like a deer program where the officers got tickets and we'd go to get a chance to see people sure. play. <clears throat> Hold my hand out, professional athletes walk right by me and I say, oh wow. I remember telling God, I said, Lord, if you ever give me a chance to make it, I will pour into someone. So when people bring me in, they're, they're, it, I like to call it the lefty experience. They really get a chance to experience where it's like, man, you know what, wow. He's just like me. And the truth is, I am. You know, God has no respect to person. If he did it for Lefty, if he did it for me, I want everyone to know that he'll do it for them. So, so you'd come back and do the little tricks with oh, the yeah. basketball? Oh, yeah, anytime. Share some of the yeah. stuff that you yeah. do? Yeah, anytime, anytime. I'm, I'm just a vessel that God has chose to use. It's very important, I want, if I may share. Sure. It's oh, very please, important please. that the people of God understand that um, accountability is everything. Uh, my uncle taught me a few years ago, back in 09, that, that people... They don't want to be held accountable for anything. Um, if you're ever going to be in a place where God can use you, you have to be able to be held accountable and give yourself uh, t accountable to someone where, you know, iron sharpens iron. I don't want to be a part of any dull knives in the drawer. Sometimes it may cause you to cut squares out of your circle. And, uh, but it's all a part of the breaking. It's all a part of the process.